I'd like to improve this map. Uh, it's okay so far. I like seeing where all the towns are, but I'd like to distinguish between Vermont and New Hampshire um, and just do that by having a slightly thicker border along the New Hampshire Vermont border and just kind of outline both states. And that seems like it would be easy uh, because, oh yeah, well, uh, maybe we could just go find and download another file um, for each, you know, but then I'm, I'm, I'm kind of lazy. I don't really want to go all the way back out to the internet and find a new file for each of these and all that type of stuff when I've already got the data here. And in my mind, I think, well, geez, I can shut each of these off. And there's Vermont. And there's New Hampshire. Why can't I just do just the outline of each of them? Well, I can. The problem is, I don't really, if I switch the borders on each of these individually, it's going to change all of the borders in between all of these towns. What I'd like to do is to kind of take each file and dissolve it so that I don't have any interior borders and I just have, um, if you can imagine, taking this and kind of just dissolving everything in, inside of it so that I'm in, I end up with just one border on the outside. So luckily in this program, there's actually a tool called Dissolve. You would, you know, maybe you wouldn't believe it. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to Geoprocessing Tools under Vector. This is all the data we're using right now um, is vector data. Um, oops, it's easy. So vector, geoprocessing, and go to Dissolve. So dissolve, and I'm going to say I want to dissolve Vermont towns. <laughs> that sounds pretty crazy, doesn't it? Um, and what I want to do is I want to dissolve everything. You can, and I'll show you another time in another video, what happens when you dissolve based on one of these fields. But for now, we're just going to say dissolve all, just dissolve everything. In the output shape file, I'm going to store in my desktop, like I have been doing everything, and I'll put it in here. I'm going to call this Vermont. Okay, save. So it's going to be called Vermont. I'm going to add the result to the canvas. And there we go. Okay. And it should work. Please work. There we go. Close. Cool. Now, that is pretty cool. That's Vermont. But it, it's kind of in the way. How do I make it behave like I want it to? Well, I'm going to start off by putting it beneath everything. Okay, that's pretty cool. Um, I still like the idea of just seeing a bold outline on the very outside and being able to see the aerial image because I like imagery. So how am I going to do that? Well, if you don't remember, you double click and you can go to style, right? And right now it's a simple fill. And I think what I'd like to do is maybe, maybe I'll make this red, but, um, okay, maybe red and the border, let's keep, uh, let's keep this, let's keep this black, I guess. We'll just see again, cartography is play. Um, and let's make the border width, um, Let's make it a little bigger. And I say apply. Okay, we're starting to see the border. Let's make it a lot bigger. I'm just gonna make it, let's just make it four. Uh, apply, that may be too big. You know, we'll have to play around. Three, apply. You know, I think three is still too big, but it'll be good for now. Maybe uh, let's do, uh, two. Okay, whatever. And I'm going to make this very transparent so that we don't see much of it. I'm going to make it 85%. Um, it's there, isn't it? Well, let's let's um bring it back to 50. See what that does. Okay, good enough for now. So there's Vermont. And now let's do the same with New Hampshire. We have to dissolve the file, right? 
go to geoprocessing, go to dissolve new Hampshire. And again, this isn't being that helpful to us because it's on top, I don't know if you can see, but it's on top of the towns. So let's bring it below the towns. Okay. And I want to make it the same as this. So let's see if I can remember how I did that. That was, um, it was a border of two. It was 50% transparent. And I'm going to make the fill a slightly different color than Vermont. I'm going to make it yellow. Okay. And let's see what that does. Apply. Very nice. Okay. Let's turn Vermont on again here. And the towns. Not bad. Um, you know, it's, it is what it is. I guess I could uh, change the colors, uh, make it more transparent. I could even just take away the fill. If I wanted to take away the fill, how would I do that? Do you remember? I'll show you with Vermont. If I want to take away the fill, I go to Simple Fill, click Fill of the border and make the alpha zero. Apply. And there, it's gone. With just the outline of uh, Vermont there. Right? Okay, so you could do whatever you want. I'm, uh, I'm going to just leave it on because I think it's okay. And um, let's move on. Okay, I'd like to select a few towns along the border here, let's say around the Connecticut River, um, because I just want to, in my, my final map, I just want to show that they're part of the same um, maybe cultural region or something. And to do that, what I need to do is I need to get the selection tool. And there are a lot of different selection tools. It probably for you is started on uh, the default selection tool is select a single feature. So if I was to, um, you have to make sure that you have the layer selected that you want to hit. And then you can just click any town in Vermont towns and it will select it. So if I was to go into my attribute table like we did before, right, then you can scroll around and then you find out, okay, Brookfield. And then if there's any other data about that town, you can select here and find it in your attribute table. But what we really want to do is we want to select a whole group of towns along the riverside and make a new file. And by making a new file, we're going to be able to symbolize it differently so that perhaps the map that we want in the end is red for Vermont, yellow for New Hampshire, and gray for the towns along the valley here. So to do that, um, first of all, I can't get more than one selected with this type of selection tool. So I'm going to clear the selection, and I'm going to use a selection tool that's called Select by Freehand. Um, you can try these other ones. They work as well, but I like this one a lot. So Select Features by Freehand, and let's just play around. I'm just going to click and drag and make a big circle. And what you'll notice is that it only selects the features in Vermont because I've got Vermont selected here. If I selected New Hampshire towns, I can make a selection and it selects those as well. So right now I have two selections going on at the same time, both in different layers. And the one thing I'll say is that it's, it's a lot easier in my mind to keep your selections just in one layer at a time. Otherwise things get really confusing. So I'm gonna clear all the selected features. Um, and go, I've got some Vermont towns selected. I'm gonna to make a little, uh, let's go from Newbury down to Heartland. I'm gonna make a little selection um, like this. Let's say that these are the ones that, um, that we care about. Uh, now what I can do is to make a new file so that I can make these a different color. I go up to this layer and right click it and say, save selection as. And it says, okay, Esri shapefile, that's perfect. That's what we're working with. There are a lot of options, but really all you want to worry about is Esri shapefile. And it should be the default. Save as, I'm going to browse to make sure I put it in the right folder. Um, New Hampshire, the Vermont New Hampshire folder, that's fine. I'm going to call this 
river um, VT for a river, uh, the towns along the river in Vermont. Save, add save file to map. Okay. And you can see that it gave me this default set of colors, which I think are kind of yucky. But um, it's also, it's covering up Vermont, which is okay, but it's also making it hard to see um, my other layers. So I'm going to drag this and put it above our state, um, the state ones. And it just turned what looks like yellow, but let's remember that that's because we have a selection. So I'm going to deselect, and then I see I should see my layer popping back in here. And now, I don't know if you can see that subtle difference. The black borders are gone. You see how this symbol here shows a thin black border around a blue uh, fill for the polygons? If I drag it back on top, oh, see, now it comes back and you can see the black borders. So I'm going to put this below because I want my towns to be symbolized the same. And this kind of very light blue cyan color I think is a little gross. So I'm going to double click River VT. And I think I might change this to a, let's just make it, um, I'm just going to completely desaturate it and make it gray. So you can do that in a number of ways. You can click white or black and then just drag this slider to you know, somewhere around halfway. <clears throat> and I'll say, well, let's just make it 150 so that we can remember for the next layer. Okay. And then for, I don't want this border. I don't think it's necessary. So I can either go to border and set the alpha at zero, or if you remember that, or I can just go to border and say no pen. And that's just going to give it no border. So I say, okay. And there we go. We have a, a solid selection um, for, you know, along that line, which is kind of cool. So let's do another band on the other side. And I don't know if you've caught on yet, but I'm going to have to select over here, New Hampshire Towns, and use my freehand tool. Let's go from have roll down to plain field like this. They save selection as river underscore NH. It sits on top like this, and um, if I move it down below New Hampshire towns but above the states, then I'm going to see the yellow. But remember that the yellow is just my selection, so I'm going to deselect. Okay. As you can see, I've made a few alterations, and I hope that you can find colors that you like. Um, it's kind of up to you. I'm just hoping that you'll explore. Let me show you two quick tricks. I'm going to switch this, these colors because I don't like brown. And what I'll do is I'm going to double click this one, change the simple fill. Let's just say that I like the color red a little better. Okay. I think we should all be able to do that by now. Now, if I want to quickly do that to this other one, I, and it's almost the exact same file, I can just right click here, say copy style and then paste it, paste the style, and it will switch to the other side of the river. Now, one more thing. I want to make a black border over here um, so that I don't have to blend. If I bring Vermont above, it, the transparency blends with these towns underneath. So I don't want to do that, but I kind of want to basically take another Vermont state boundary and put it on top and make it hollow completely transparent so that only the border comes through so to do that i'm going to do this say i'm going to say duplicate i get a copy vermont copy i'm going to put that on the top turn it on yuck but then i can double click i'm going to go into the fill as you might remember and make it zero and say okay and i'm going to say okay and there's my map. Please play around with it. Um, feel free to go around and see how you do, and I'll meet you in the next video for um, printing.